Hi, I'm Jamie Anderson and you're watching Get Your Sax Together. I sax up every Sunday for you with free online saxophone lessons to help improve your technique, improvise great solos and learn your favourite songs. On this week's show, you're going to learn what a 2-5-1 chord sequence is and how to get started improvising on it. Last year I didn't cover much jazz on the channel as I mistakenly thought that most people would be interested in other stuff. However, after all you generous people filled in my quiz recently, you know who you are and thank you, I realised that the majority of my audience is interested in jazz. If you're not interested in playing jazz, fear not, there's still going to be loads of funk, soul, pop and rock stuff as usual. It's just that I'm going to throw in more jazz on top, which is great because amongst other things, I'm a total jazz head. <laughs> If you're new to the channel, make sure you go and pick up my special free gift to you, which is a one hour saxophone success masterclass, jam packed with everything I know about sax that I could fit into 60 minutes. It's a totally insane giveaway, suitable for beginners and sax right up to advanced players. Just click the link in the description for the video or go to www.getyoursaxtogether.com forward slash masterclass. Also, there's a free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson covering everything you're going to learn today and you can get that from the link in the description as well. All good in the hood. Let's crack on with the lesson now and make sure you keep watching to the end because I've got a great bonus for you. Woo! <laughs> Today's goal is to learn the basics of 251s. So the first question is, what is a 251? To answer this, I'm going to jump behind the screen for this lesson. First of all, if you haven't already, you definitely need to go and watch at least the first two videos in my four-part series on basic music harmony. These videos will explain all about scales, keys and chords. The card for that playlist is above now. If you haven't watched them, even if you think you already know what you're talking about, pause this video now, go and watch them, then come back. So, now that you're up to speed on the basics, here's a C major scale. If we call C number one, D number two, E number three, and so on, we get this. In music, we use Roman numerals to label each degree of the scale. This makes it look like this. Roman numerals are the numbers we're talking about when we say two, five, and one. The two, five, and one just means the second, fifth, and first degree of the major scale of the key you're in. Next, only using notes from the C major scale, we stack up seventh chords on each scale degree. This just means we make a chord going up in thirds on each scale note. It looks and sounds like this. Now let's take away all the chords apart from the 2, 5 and 1 chords. Seeing as you've already watched the first two lessons from my harmony series, you'll now know that the chords we are left with are D minor 7, G7 and C major 7. That my friend is a 2-5-1 chord sequence in C major. And with the chords just played in root position, it sounds like this. If we redistribute those exact same notes across different octaves, it sounds like this. So to recap then, a 2-5-1 chord sequence uses chords built on the second, fifth and first note of the major scale of the key you're using, with all the chord notes coming from that home major scale. The 2 chord is a minor 7, 
the five chord is a dominant seven and the one chord is a major seven. Simple as that. So now we know what a two, five, one is, but why do we use it? The answer is explained in part three of my music harmony series linked on the card above. So the easiest thing to do is to go and watch that video now. However, just to quickly summarize it here, chord one of the home key always sounds very final and doesn't want to go anywhere. Whereas chord five of the key feels like it wants to resolve to chord one. That creates tension. You can almost feel it physically in your body. Those dissonant notes just long to resolve. And when they do, you can breathe a sigh of relief and all's well in the world. <laughs> this tension and release is the basis of all Western music harmony. We can preempt the extreme tension of the five chord by using a two chord. This sets up the five chord. In rock and roll and classical music, this two chord is usually a four chord. So that's why we use two, five, one chord sequences. This particular combination of chords creates a bit of tension with the minor seven, two chord, and then a lot of tension with the dominant seven, five chord, which then resolves in a satisfying way to the home major seven chord of the key. This incremental tension and release gives shape and structure to almost every melody in the jazz standard repertoire and much more besides. To understand and recognize two five ones is to hold the keys to the kingdom of jazz standards. Make sure you get familiar with this stuff in all 12 keys, plus the two five ones in minor keys as well. Then suddenly, instead of seeing a sea of disconnected chords, you'll see clusters of two five ones in various keys. For example, here's a jazz standard, a weaver of dreams. I've highlighted the chords that don't fit into some variety of two five ones. As you can see, there's only two chords in the whole 32 bar sequence that don't fit into some form of major or minor two five one. We'll cover more advanced 251 stuff like minor 25s and 36251s in a later lesson, but today is all about the basics and what you really need to know is what to play on this chord sequence when you're improvising. As you can imagine, you could spend the rest of your life exploring what to play on 25s, but let's just cover three tips that will give you the biggest bang for buck, and here they are. Number one, use the notes of each chord. Number two, join up the notes of the chord with the major scale of the key. And number three, use enclosures to frame chord notes. So first up, tip number one, use chord notes. This is as easy as pie. You just use the four notes from each chord of the sequence and jumble them up to create a new line. For example, if you're in C, you would use D, F, A, and C for the D minor seven chord, G, B, D, and F for the G seven chord, and C, E, G, and B for the C major seven chord. I'll give you a quick demo of that now. Next, tip number two, you can start on one of those chord notes and use the notes of the home major scale to travel to other chord notes. Here's an example of that. Finally, tip three, using enclosures. 
This is what really gets you sounding like a jazz musician, but it's a bit more complicated. In a nutshell, you choose a chord note, but before you hit that note, you play the scale note above and below, or vice versa. This would be called a diatonic enclosure, which means enclosing the chord tone with notes from the home major scale. A variation on this is to use the chromatic notes above and below the chord note. This is known as a chromatic enclosure. Finally, you can enclose your chosen chord note with two notes above and below. Again, either chromatically or diatonically. Doing all this in theory is fine, but to really use enclosures well, you need to transcribe great bebop and hardbop players. Go to the card linked above to learn how to transcribe. They've done the hard work of sifting through all the various combinations of diatonic and chromatic enclosures to get the best ones. So <laughs> I'd just copy them if I were you. Here's an example of using enclosures. <laughs> Here's what to do if you want to learn how to improvise on 2-5-1s then. First, learn what the chords are for 2-5-1s in all the keys, or at least most of the main ones. Second, get super familiar with the chord notes for each of those 2-5s. It's important to target the right chord notes if you want to sound convincing. Finally, transcribe some hard bop players and see what they do to get familiar with how to use enclosures, etc. I promised you there would be a great bonus, and here it is. I'm gonna give you five great 2-5-1 licks to get you started. To make it simple, they're all played on tenor in C, but make sure you learn the licks and start transposing them through every key. Each example emphasizes one of the tips we've learned. Remember to go into the description and click the link to get your PDF which has everything from the lesson, as well as these licks. Here we go. So that's it for this week. I hope I've helped you clear some of the fog surrounding 251s. I can't do any of the hard practice for you, but at least I can show you the way. Don't forget to watch my free Saxophone Success Masterclass linked in the description and pick up your free PDF for this lesson. I really appreciate you watching this channel and you can continue to support me by leaving me a comment, like and subscribe, ring the bell icon and visit my socials, Insta and Facebook. Next week, it's back to a solo breakdown. Michael Brecker's iconic solo on Still Crazy After All These Years by Paul Simon. Until then, enjoy your two fives and I'll see you later. If you're new to the channel, I can't do that with my nose in the middle of a take. Come off it. Just click the link in the... Ah!